A liminal space is classified as a transitioning area between two places, like a staircase, a hallway, or even a parking lot, and while the internet fascination over these areas in recent years comes from a sort of creepy nostalgia we get from seeing familiar places that just aren't right. For example, a school hallway at night with no people in any direction. So what better way to tackle these nostalgic vibes than by looking into the favorite space-bound world of ours as children of Star Wars, which contains these spaces that range from the Empire Strikes Back to even the Clone Wars. First off, we have the Great Grass Plains where the Battle of Naboo takes place. And the hilarious thing about this is that the area looks nearly identical to the Windows XP wallpaper of their computers in the early 2000s, which was produced and taken by Charles O'Rear as an apparently unphotoshopped image. When made into the wallpaper of this system, the photo was renamed to Bliss and is thought to maybe be the most viewed picture in history since everyone with the computer would have seen it. In episode 1, this area is known as the Great Grass Plains, which was located 40 kilometers or roughly 25 miles away from Theed, and this is where the Gungan forces would hold up their shield generators against the droid barrage led by Um 9 which is that one battle droid. Crazy enough, the two locations are both real, and it's actually quite easy to drive from one to the other. Windows XP wallpaper was taken in Sonoma. Noma County, California, and the Naboo Hillside was filmed near Livermore, California, which as seen on a map are both very close. Also, both were filmed around the same time with the Bliss image taken in January 1996, while this scene for The Phantom Menace was filmed sometime between June and September of 1997. Anyways though, the point is that these two look very similar with the plain hills of Naboo. Also, George Lucas ended up digitally stretching the hills to make them feel less Earth-like, leading to an arguably uncanny vibe. Overall, I still think it holds up insanely well on an effects level, but overall there's no denying the strange nostalgia these similarities present, because I'm sure any kid that was born around this time very well knows this wallpaper. I mean, pretty much everyone does. The guy that made it even went as far as to say that it's the most famous thing he ever worked on. And I'd like to think that some middle-aged critic in the 90s that hates George Lucas for making the prequels any different than his childhood, sitting up late at night making an article about how George copied the Windows XP wallpaper. I don't know, it just seems like something that probably happened. It is kind of weird how Naboo is just this whole lived-in area that has so many details from Theed to the swamp to all this other stuff, but then you just have these planes that are completely lifeless in a lot of ways, so yeah, and if it makes you feel better, this was also in the Clone Wars and the Blue Shadow Virus episode, so it's not like this was just a 90s thing. They George Lucas just made that decision that that was going to be part of Naboo. Next up, I want to mention some different Clone Wars places that I think fit these places very well in nature because there definitely are quite a few that could be mentioned here. And I'm sure I'm missing some, but first off is Mortis. And while I really couldn't count this as a liminal space, it also really fits these vibes because there's just such an odd, creepy vibe I get from seeing Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka wander around this place when there's no people, no creatures or anything. There are a few plants, but generally it is very, very empty and just has this weird, strange vibe over the whole thing. Also, the father's voice, among many other aspects of this season 3 arc, are undeniably disturbing to an extent, like Anakin's future getting shown by the sun. So I really just think this area has some truly weird vibes that always give me a weird feeling, and that's one of the big reasons I love this arc so much in the first place. I also want to briefly mention the third moon of Vesek, which is where Kit Fisto and Nadar Veb search for General Grievous in the episode titled Lair of Grievous, which of course takes place in his lair. Crazy stuff, I know. But seriously though, this building has such a spooky vibe from the little group wandering around the dark, empty compass that definitely qualifies as liminal since they move from room to room. Lastly, from these Clone Wars places, I picked Abafar from the episode A Sunny Day in the Void, which is the desolate planet that had a vast desert known as the Void, where the atmosphere covers the sun and tracks in the ground are not visible, making it very easy to get lost. No, this really 
really feels like a level of the backrooms to me, and in the episode, Colonel Gaskin and D Squadron basically go insane out here in this area that is terrifyingly simple and scary to imagine being stuck in in such a place. This also counts as liminal to me since it shows D Squad going from their crashed ship to the nearest water source. The 1971 George Lucas movie THX 1138 served as inspiration for this episode due to the void scenes in that movie, which are in and of themselves quite liminal and old too. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. Mm -hmm. Every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. And I don't know if it's just me, but whenever these entries are older, that just makes them even more creepy for me personally. Now you probably heard me mention the back rooms earlier, and while I'd assume most people watching this video know very, very well about them, for those who don't, the back rooms is a popular internet creepypasta starting in 2019, which basically incorporates all of the elements of liminal space horror into one cohesive story or place with a bunch of different levels and entities on each level, and a big influence on the Backrooms horror was Kane Pixels who has his own series on YouTube. The most well known thing from the Backrooms of course is level 1, which is a damp yellow office space with infinite cubicles and flickering fluorescent lights. This brings us to our next section of the video, which is the original Cloud City scene in the first versions of the movie, and honestly the resemblance is striking. So basically, in case you don't know, one special edition change that GL made over the four versions from 1980 to 2011 was the addition of windows in Cloud City, which means yes, in the original version, this Tabana Mining Bespin City just had no windows whatsoever and was basically just this empty maze of passageways with little to no life minus a few shots. While it still had the same architectural and color palette designs, other than the few establishing shots on the hangar area as well as the few glimpses of Ugnaughts and Bespin citizens walking past, the majority of this sequence in the movie is just a creepy dead area of white hallways. Many have described this as claustrophobic and somewhat uncanny due to the old nature of it. Later on, Lucas would actually change this so that there were more windows installed in many of the rooms and corridors, especially during the scene of Leia, Lando, and the other heroes versus the stormtroopers stationed there, which produced a more vibrant, orange coloration that gave the setting more breathing room. Also, extra shots were added of the citizens outside among the buildings in the 2011 edition, making it feel even more lived in. After the intentional changes were made, little tweaks like reflections on the glass, improved rotoscoping, and also extra characters were added to the scenes. The original is still very haunting though, especially in a movie I at least consider to be quite nostalgic. Can you imagine that these characters had to live in this version of Cloud City at the time, and apparently I also heard that behind the scenes a bunch of the actors were drunk during the filming of a lot of the Cloud City stuff, so that just makes it even more interesting. And as is the case with most Liminal Space videos on YouTube, I of course have to mention the early games of the 2000s that, as is usually the case with these digital projects of the 90s and 2000s, produce a very uncanny vibe when viewed with no characters in them. Like some kind of low poly ghost town that for some will again provoke an odd sense of nostalgia. I won't go into this too much, but I watched a video from this guy called Annie Austin going over some odd places from games like Star Wars Episode 1 Racer and also Battlefront 2 the 2005 edition, so I'll link his videos down below. Nothing is more creepy than the buildings we were so familiar with as children having hundreds of characters in them that are now just empty with no people or aliens in sight. So to close off the video, I'll be showing you a bunch of these places from the original six movies that in my opinion are very unnerving to look at in this state. First off, we have the halls of the Lucra Hulk class ship from the Phantom Menace, and this one, just like any of the other capital ships like Star Destroyers, just have something so eerie about them when there's no one there. It's just like we're in some huge mall that's empty and we feel lost or like we shouldn't be in here. You almost get this vibe in the Lucra Hulk level from Jedi Survivor, but unfortunately Cal is there to ruin all the fun, so thanks Cal. Next up we have Kamino, which just feels so weird without the tall necked Kaminoans walking around, and also the Grand Republic armies patrolling the training areas. And believe me, those guys already looked zesty as it is, but at least they could keep you company 
if you were here. Some areas from Revenge of the Sith that produce these same feelings are Mustafar, the Jedi Temple, and the Invisible Hand. It just makes you feel like you're by yourself in this dark ship as the Battle of Coruscant is going on around you, and you're just utterly alone. Also, the Death Star would be very creepy with no one there, and can you just imagine the lights going out too with just some emergency red ones in the distance? Uh, I'll pass on that one myself. Lastly, we have Jabba's Palace from Return of the Jedi, which would just be so haunting to be in all alone, expecting to see some strange alien hiding around the corner, only to find nothing. And I just thought of a great horror game for Star Wars that someone watching could make. What if you woke up as Han Solo out of carbonite freezing, and all of a sudden, all the lights are turned off in the building other than a few red lights here and there, and everyone is gone except for a terrifying version of Jabba who is chasing you around. Uh, it's just a thought, but uh, that would be a pretty cool game, so I'm sure if anyone ever did make that, they'd probably make a really bad version of it, but if anyone makes one makes like a genuinely good game, I think that's a cool idea, so there you go. And I won't be going into the Disney era of Star Wars all that much, but basically just know that I'm kind of assuming that most people watching aren't like seven years old, but if you are, that's cool. I mean, you know, I'll welcome anyone to my audience. It is for all ages, so I'm sure there is something nostalgic from there, but also the effects were a little bit less uncanny in those movies anyway, so there isn't too much to choose from. But anyway, that's it for this video. You can subscribe if you want to. In case you don't already know, I'm doing a face reveal at 1k subs, so if you want to know what I look like, then stay tuned for that. I upload every Friday and sometimes on Sunday too at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Center Time. Also, I post shorts on Saturday, but uh, yeah. See ya. <laughs>